Okay, here's a video about resonance structures. Um, let's take a problem where we are told that there's a molecule that has connections like this. Now, either you have to be told how the atoms are connected in the molecule, or it has to be really obvious for you. Uh, hydrogens, for example, are only going to have one bond, and so that can give you a clue to how the atoms are connected. But we are told here that this nitrogen is bound to this one, which is central, which is bound to the carbon over here. Now, we aren't told anything else about where the electrons are arranged in this molecule. We just know that they're bound together in this pattern, and we're asked to draw really a, um, a Lewis dot structure that can describe the bonding pattern in this molecule and see if we have any choices in that bond in that um, bonding arrangement if we have choices then we have potential resonance structures okay so the first thing to do when trying to really satisfy the octet of each of these atoms is to figure out how many electrons you have to work with and so we have two nitrogens a carbon and two hydrogens each nitrogen can give us five valence electrons. So we have 10 valence electrons from our nitrogen. Our one carbon gives us four valence electrons. And each hydrogen gives us one valence electron to work with. So we have a total of 16 valence electrons to work with. Now we've already used some of those electrons to bond these atoms together. We've used two, four, six, eight. So we subtract eight electrons from the total, and we have eight electrons left to make everyone happy in this molecule, to give everyone an octet, except, of course, for the hydrogens, which are happy with two electrons. Now, the way I proceed from this point is I ask myself, well, how many electrons would each atom need to make an octet if I were just going to add them on as lone pairs. Okay. So this nitrogen has two electrons. In order to make an octet, it would need six more electrons. <clears throat> this nitrogen would need four more electrons. That's a total of ten so far. And this carbon would need two more electrons. That means I would need twelve electrons in order to make everyone have an octet if I were to add those electrons just as lone pairs. Now I don't have 12 electrons, I only have 8. And so for every two electrons that we're lacking, I'm going to have to add a double bond. So we're lacking 4 electrons, so that means we will use 2 more bonds. This describes we don't have enough electrons for everybody to have them for themselves, so there are going to have to be some sharing involved. So we're going to have two more bonds. Now, where I put these bonds is really going to determine the different resonance structures that I have. So let's just put a couple in there. Here's an easy thing to do. We'll put two bonds, one between this nitrogen and that carbon, one between the nitrogens. So I had eight electrons. I used four of them, so now I have four electrons remaining to make everyone happy, and if I did my calculations right, that should be plenty. That should be exactly enough. So here, we have this nitrogen. It has two, four electrons. It needs four more. I just used all my electrons. I'm down to zero, so hopefully everyone else is happy. This nitrogen has an octet, this carbon has an octet, hydrogens are fine. This is a legitimate resonance structure for this molecule. Okay. Now, this isn't the only structure that works. You know, when I decided I needed two more bonds, I did have a choice of where to put those. So let's think of the other possibility that I had and see if that gives me a different structure, one that might be better, one that might be the same, might be worse. So I chose previously to put one, one bond here, one bond there, 
What if I put both of them here, between this nitrogen and this carbon? Well, that is another choice, but it's not a good one, because that would give 10 electrons around this carbon. It would overload it, exceed its octet. So that's not going to work. What if I put two bonds over here? And that is a possibility. Okay. This central nitrogen now has a complete octet. This nitrogen on the end has six electrons. It needs two more. This carbon has six electrons. It needs two more. Again, I'm left with zero electrons. I used my two bonds. I had four electrons left over. And those are used to as lone pairs to satisfy the octet. These are both legitimate resonance structures because each atom has a complete octet. Now, if we have to decide which one of these is better, we need to assign formal charges to each atom in the resonance structure. So let's start at the top. This nitrogen here has five valence electrons, minus two bonds, minus four valence or lone pair electrons. That leaves me with a formal charge of negative one. This nitrogen, five valence electrons, minus four bonds, minus zero lone pair electrons, gives me a formal charge of plus one. And since this molecule overall is neutral, everybody else, it, it, my formal charges need to add up to zero. This carbon has four valence electrons, minus four bonds. It has a formal charge of zero, and each of these hydrogens has a formal charge of zero. One valence electron minus one bond. So let's look at the formal charge of this resonance structure. Well, each of these hydrogens are the same. This nitrogen now has a formal charge of zero. This nitrogen remains with a formal charge of plus one. And this carbon has a formal charge of minus one. Four valence electrons minus one, two, three bonds, minus one, two lone pair electrons, minus one. So looking at both of these resonance structures, they both have similar charges uh, for formal charges. They have a plus one and a minus one, so you can't judge them based on which one has less formal charges. But you can judge, really, based on the difference between the two. In the top one, the nitrogen has the negative formal charge. In the bottom one, the carbon has the negative one formal charge. Now, which one of these atoms can handle that negative charge better? Well, it's the more electronegative one, which is nitrogen. And so a more stable formal charge would be one where the nitrogen has the negative formal charge. And so we would choose this top one as a more stable. Now, that doesn't mean this is the only structure. It means, really, that these electrons are resonating back and forth, and um, but uh, a little more stable in this top structure.